seven years and it's all cool, but there's a lot more to all this than just the target small and the short So first I'm gonna tie my sleeves back. This this would have been um, wear for a Sumrai, a little high class Sumrai. Separate. This is called Tosti or tying the sleeves. To get them out of the way. Miyamoto Musashi um, was reputed to have made a tusky out of paper by folding paper together on his way up to Ganryu Island to fight Sasaki Kojiro. The famous story. So different thing from when what you see with Japanese swords. Most of Japanese sword stuff is modern. Okay, whether they cut or not, it's mostly modern. Um, you see a lot of one sword being worn instead of two swords. Samurai wore two swords. Okay, modern stuff like Yaida wears one where this sword should be. If you were only wearing one sword, it would be your short sword. Okay, so just so you understand what the deal. That was the whole thing with being a samurai was wearing two swords. Sometimes a wagizashi like this, which was usually about two-thirds the length of the katana, which is the long sword, or some form of tanto. There was no uniform length of swords or styles in a sense, okay? Samurai could do what they wanted. Modern Japan is different. Uh, ancient Japan uh, was, was, a, was a completely different place. So the ability to cut is not an art in that sense of the term. It should be just an evolution of your practice. The, uh, the Japanese sword art was called Kenjutsu um, for, the, for the long sword. And all of the movements come from that. And they're completely different than modern movements or modern martial arts. There's no leverage used. It's a completely different practice, how you walk on the ground. It's hard to see from the outside. So we're going to show you some cotton stuff as well, but it's a completely different practice than modern martial arts. So when you're cutting, you try to take the arms and shoulders and the swinging out. What you want to do is you want to cut from inside your body. And you cut from inside your body, actually moving your left hip back and my right foot forward. Okay. If I'm cutting left to right, then my right hip moves back. Okay? It's a very different way. You're not leaning, pressing. Now you can swing like a baseball bat. However, trying to survive close combat with edge weapons like this is extremely difficult. Okay? I have to get close enough to touch the other person, which means he's close enough to touch me. conundrum is, if I'm close enough to touch my opponent, he's also close enough to touch me. Now in the military environment, we say that when my enemy's close, you know, so am I, right? If I can touch my enemy, he can touch me back. But the reality is, you know, he could be two blocks away, you know, some Middle Eastern town that hasn't had glass in the building, you're sitting two rooms back in, and you can tune him up. Practically, I mean, technically, you're within the range of his weapon, but you're not practically. So the whole thing is, how do I actually touch somebody with this sword to kill them without allowing them to touch me back? The exchanges of force and stuff that you see in the movies are not how you would survive here. Okay? So, what we're going to do before we cut in for is show a couple of the kata that are teaching you a methodology for how do you move your body differently. swords were used in order to go back and forth with each other without serious injury, although really you can you can seriously injure somebody obviously with a piece of wood properly. So the kata that were put together, okay, are training methodologies, not so much to teach you a technique per se, 
but to teach you a different way of perceiving and moving. Okay? A different way of perceiving and moving. Not pushing off, not loading up. Okay? Things that are normal, not pushing off against the ground when you move. So, when I'm going to do some cuts from draws, that would be if Dominic had his sword out, okay, and he was attacking me. I would have to be able to draw and cut rapidly. Now, an interesting thing with this, if I do a normal movement that you guys would have to do, you can drive right through me. This movement that you see in the idol, etc., won't stop somebody from cutting. They can drive right through that. It's a very different methodology. As I'm coming straight out, I bring all of this back behind my head. It literally skips its blade like a rock skips on water. The water can't hold the rock, but it can skip it. If I come out here and try to block, he'll drive right through me, which would be bad for me. Good for him. Okay. So taking those movements into, say, if I had a smaller tool, say I don't have this tool, and he's cutting at me with that particular tool. Okay. Oh, so use the same method. Okay, I'm skipping the rock again. If I try to knock it away, he's cutting hard, it's not going to work. There's too much power there. So what happens is, just as he gets to where I am, this hip releases and changes the shape of my body. And you're blending with him in the moment before you come in and service the threat. The bottom part of this. Okay? Well, you couldn't be out here like, you see all the blocking and stuff that takes place. All the back and forth the guys are doing. This is a really bad idea if you're trying to survive and the guy has a lethal weapon. Samurai didn't do that. So, in a beginning kata, in Kenjutsu, okay, I'm going to create an opening so that Dominic feels that comfortable. If I hold my sword like this, he's not going to raise his sword up because if he raises his sword up, and I can just come in, notice I turn the sword over, I can just come in and stab as he does that. So I need to create an opening first. And it's the beginning to teach you how to create an opening and a real one, not a fake or a fint, so that the guy feels that he has the opportunity to actually attack you. So first, I'm going to create that opening. So beginning, get from the side. In beginning, what happens is the same thing we just did. As he does this slowly, as he's cutting down, and my body turns like this, he catches blade at an angle. As this turns here, it actually skips his blade from the back of my body, moving this way and bringing my sword in. No pushing, okay? If I push, it goes to his right foot. He can drive through me, okay? If I don't push, it skips it. It's a very odd feeling. Young man, can I borrow you? Okay? So get back enough so you can sit down. And so if you start falling backward, just sit. So we'll bang. So push back. Okay? Push your heels on your feet, right? Push back. Push back. Now, can you guys you guys can't see that difference, but he can feel that difference because this stuff is designed Sorry. not to be seen. If you're and you can see what's doing. Good luck, right? That's why you should probably tell our politicians what we will. Don't tell people what we're going to or not going to do to solve a problem. It's like the stupidest thing you can possibly do. Like, and why do we like these people? Okay. So, so it's a very different thing. Another thing that takes place. Okay. So you understand. Right? Goes right to your feet. Now, the deal is, is he cut? Absolutely. Will he die? Sure. Is he dead yet? No. <laughs> that means that he can kill me as well. And that was very common. It's called Ayuchi, mutual killing. Okay? Just because I get steel on him, doesn't mean it's gonna kill him. Just because I get a couple rounds on him first, doesn't mean he's dead. Right? For those of you who've been in that environment, he can easily be shooting back in the process. So, the difficult thing is here is I literally have to be able to get in touch with this. So what they did is they moved the camera. 
sexy that I've ever seen feeling. They didn't cut like you see people cut. They didn't swing the sword like a baseball bat. They're not doing these types of things, some of the modern Japanese arts that were brought up you know, prior to World War II to send people off with swords that they didn't know how to use. Okay? And so all the striking and all the cutting is done from a very different movement base than karate or kung fu or boxing, which I've done all that stuff. I was a kickboxer in the 70s. I was taught to box by Kobo, Kobo Olsen, Carl, Carl Olsen, who was a weight camp. <coughs> so the striking is done in a very different way as well. Okay? Yeah. Now, it doesn't look like much because I'm relaxing and I'm letting that wave of energy flow through me. You just can't see it. Okay? But this is where the deep, different, the study is different in the old days. Does that make sense? It doesn't really, I understand, but I just want to show you that there's a different process than swinging and chopping and all the stuff that you see out there. Okay? It takes a little time to learn, but it's worth it, especially when you get into the prime of your life, like the late 60s, like me, and you're still working with military special operations group and stuff because the skill that you learn is not strength, etc. dependent, or leverage dependent. We don't use leverage. It's very different. Okay? So... A couple of other methodologies that were here. So, say he was going to stab at me called the ski. Okay? T S U S K I. Okay? So, let's take a look at that again. What I'm going to do is bring this back just gather this western swordsmanship at high level uses these as well it's not the banging clanging thing that you see all the time when they're smashing swords together okay and yes right if you don't do it when you're busy talking to people it's a good thing he's using a piece of wood right <laughs> <Some alpha babes. laughs> so, okay. No forward and backward movement. So things that you don't see here is forward and backward shifting of weight movement. It takes time, space, energy, and it's perceptible to your opponent, which is a bad idea. Okay? There's no bell going back and forth. Once once somebody moves within a half a second to a second, one or both are mortally wounded. So it's same with our small knife stuff. There's no back and forth here. Once somebody moves, at least one of them is going to be dead or mortally wounded not injured. The problem with injuring is people can still fight. If they can still fight, that means you're still in lethal danger. If there's more than one of them, I can't, can't repeat what they'd say in Ireland. So you're in bad shape. Mm. Okay. So when you're doing the cutting, what you're doing is practicing some of the movements. So first the Aijutsu Kata, the Aijutsu is the rabbit. 